Welcome, my dear students of class 7, to another class with me, your tutor, Atsinio Sekose, and this is an English class tutoring coming from the Directorate of School Education, Nagaland. And today our topic is called Gopal and the Hilsa Fish. Now, this is a very short story and it is a very interesting story. You will find it on page 36, on page 36, and as you can see, this story is being told through pictures. As you can see, there are lots of pictures there and uh, very less words. And if you find words, you would find it in captions such as these kind of captions or bubbles. These are bubbles when, you know, the character, the person is thinking to himself. That's when we find these bubbles. So from using all these and looking at the pictures, we will be getting to know more about the story instead of just simply reading the words. In fact, of course, if we read out the comic, we will find that there are lots of things that you can uh, collect from reading the comic as well as looking at the pictures and reading the words within the captions or callouts or bubbles as we can see. So these kind of stories which are written in this way are called comic, all right? And I'm sure you, some of you love to read comics books and uh, you will also find that these are uh, found, these callouts are found in one certain box like that, isn't it? So you will see that those are called comic strip. So when I explained, I would say the f in the first comic strip here, that's what is happening. So that's how we would be going about. Now, we would also be learning some few things about some new words here. So I would go through it and I suggest you note it down. And later on also, uh, some more words would be given. I suggest you keep your pencil ready with you. So when we come across new words, you would note it down. So the first one we have here is Hilsa fish. A Hilsa fish is a very scaly, a fish that has got scales, all right? Scaly fish and it is very costly but very popular in India. So that's what we are going to talk about here. Then fishmongers. A fishmonger is a person who sells fish or we can also say uh, shops that sells a fish for food. Now the next point we have here is courtiers. A courtier is a person who attend to a king, all right? And if we say a single courtier, that means we can also say in some cases, they are also the advisor to the king. So here, the next point, downcast eyes, which means looking down with shame or out of shame, all right? Uh, next point here, guilty, feeling sorry or regretful of what uh, a person might have done. Then number six, smearing, which means covering. In our text here, in our story here, we can also say applying certain things on the, uh, his face. Then seven, disgraceful, which means shameful. I'm sure all of you know that. Eight, comical, which means looking very funny, all right? Then number nine, mystic. Mystic here in our text or in our story, we can understand it as uh, a spiritual person. Then number 10, strangely, which means odd, looking out of place. So those are some new words here and we are going to find out our story here and I hope you would be looking down into your text and follow as I go. Now, uh, Gopal and the Hilsa fish. In our first comic strip there, we have here, it was the season for Hilsa fish. Fishermen could think of nothing but Hilsa fish. So it was the season of Hilsa fish and we can see in the picture some fishermen trying to catch Hilsa fish. Fishmongers sold nothing but Hilsa fish. So even in the market, uh, the fishmongers are selling nothing except Hilsa fish. And they are saying, come buy, the price of Hilsa is down today. So that is what is going on in the market. On the other hand, householders could talk of nothing but Hilsa fish. Householders here, we can say uh, the head of the house, so maybe the wife or the person who usually cooks. So here, how much did you pay for that Hilsa? A housewife is saying that, you wouldn't believe it if I told you. So everyone is talking about Hilsa fish here. And in the palace too, 
the courtiers could discuss nothing but Hilsa fish. So even at the palace, the topic, the discussion of Hilsa fish has reached the palace. And one of the courtiers seems to be saying in a very excited manner, Your Majesty, you should have seen the huge Hilsa I caught. It was and we see three dots there, which means he was interrupted. The king is looking very angry in the next strip. Don't you think? Stop it! So that's how he was stopped. Are you a courtier or a fisherman? So he pointed out that, are you a courtier? Are you an advisor in the king's palace or a fisherman? Talking like a fisherman here, getting very excited about Hilsa fish. The courtier fell silent with downcast eyes. We know what is downcast eyes here. So the courtier also started to feel ashamed or sorry. And when that happened, the king felt guilty. The king also felt sorry because he lost his temper. I'm sorry, I lost my temper. It is the season for Hilsa fish and no one, and he looked at another person here, not even Gopal, so Gopal must be the advisor to the king, can stop anyone from talking about Hilsa fish, not even for five minutes. So the king was very sure that even the advisor cannot uh, go on, carry a discussion without talking about Hilsa fish even for five minutes. So when he said that, what did Gopal say? Oh, I think I could, your majesty. He thinks that he would be able to carry on a discussion without talking about Hilsa fish. So then the king said, then let me see you buy a huge Hilsa and bring it to the palace without anyone asking you a word about it. So the king is actually giving him a challenge. And Gopal said, I accept the challenge, your majesty. The challenge here, we can also underline it and write task. It is a task given by the king here. So in the next page, a few days later, why is your face half shaven? Now remember, we see the call out here and this call out is directly pointing to a woman. So this must be Gopal's wife. I'm dressing up to buy a fish. So now Gopal is trying to get ready in order to take up that challenge or task. I'm dressing up to buy a fish. What's the matter with you? Why are you smearing yourself with ash? So now we see that Gopal has half uh, shaven half of his beard and now smearing, applying ash. We all know what is an ash, so applying ash all over his face. And Gopal replied to his wife, I told you I'm dressing up to buy a Hilsa fish. Then he is going out here, listen to me, please. You can't possibly go out in those disgraceful rags. What are you up to? How many times must I tell you, woman, I am out to buy Hilsa fish. So that's how he went out to the market. Remember, he first shaved half, shaved half of his beard off, then applied some ash on his face, covered in ash, in other words, and then put on some very disgraceful, uh, disrespectful, old, shabby clothes, rags here. So it's happened to him. He's gone mad. The woman is thinking, remember we have a bubble here, thinking to herself, oh, Gopal must have gone mad. Gopal bought the Hilsa fish and started walking towards the palace. Then we see that uh, people in the market, they are looking at him in a very surprised, shocked manner. And one of the children is pointing to Gopal and saying, Mother, look at that man. Isn't he comical? So even the child is finding this fellow very funny, so comical, looking very funny. He must be a madman. Madman here is a crazy person. Some other people were saying he must have gone crazy. Hush, I think he's a mystic. Another one is thinking to himself or saying that uh, this person must be a mystic, a spiritual person. When Gopal reached the court, what do you want? Now, the guard asked him, I want to see the king. So see, even the guard cannot recognize uh, the advisor, Gopal, because he's dressing up in that very strange way. You can't see the king, get away with you. Gopal began to dance and sing loudly. So he's trying to attract the attention of the king here. And he started to act in a very funny, weird manner. Inside the palace, as you can see, the picture of the king, 
trying to listen what is going on outside. The man is crazy, throw him out at once. I want to see the king, let me in. So those are the commotion that is, or the noises that were carried in into the palace and the king was able to hear that. Bring that man to me at once. Yes, your majesty. So the king ordered to bring that fellow in. Gopal was brought before the king. So in that way, Gopal was able to enter the palace. And some of the courtiers seemed to be recognizing him, saying, it's Gopal. They looked surprised. The man has lost his mind. Remember, he is dressing in a very funny way. He is carrying a huge, a big fish in that manner. And another courtier said, I think it's one of his crazy jokes. So from here, we can also tell that maybe Gopal usually likes to play tricks or jokes in this way. Now, the king said, all right, Gopal, out with it. Out with it here means tell us what's going on. Why are you dressed up in this ridiculous fashion, in this funny, out of place manner, fashion? Your majesty, you seem to have forgotten something. Remember, the king has given him a task, isn't it? And so the Gopal has reminded him, forgotten something? The king is also trying to remember here. Strangely enough, no one seems to be interested in Hilsa fish today said Gopal, from the market to the palace and in the court, not a soul has spoken a word about Hilsa fish. Remember, as we were reading, nobody's talking about Hilsa fish except how funny he looked. Maybe he's a mystic. Some people were saying nobody noticed that he's carrying a huge Hilsa fish, right? So that's why Gopal pointed out that in a very odd way, nobody is talking about Hilsa fish today except how funny I looked. So when he pointed it out in that way, we find a picture of the king laughing uh, in a very funny manner. Only then did the king remember the challenge and he had thrown the challenge he had thrown to Gopal. So he started laughing. Ha ha, well done, congratulations. You have achieved the impossible once again. So the king also realized that Gopal has succeeded in carrying out that challenge and the task. So that is our comic here, our comic story here. So to put it very short, this story is about a clever person called Gopal who is attending to a king and it is the uh, season of Hilsa fish. And everyone, everywhere, they are talk people are talking about Hilsa fish. And the, the king uh, could not take it anymore. He does not want to hear any word about Hilsa fish anymore. So when that happened, uh, he also think that even his advisor, Gopal, would not be able to talk without mentioning Hilsa fish. But Gopal took up that challenge and in a very clever way, he disguised himself, changed his appearance. Remember three things that he had done, that is shaved half of his beard off. And if someone is walking about in that way, we will all find that very noticeable and very surprised, isn't it? So he did that in a very clever way, then put on some ash and then put on some very shabby clothes, looking like a beggar and not a person who is from the court, all right? And so in that way, when he disguised himself, changed his appearance in that way, nobody was able to recognize him and nobody seemed to notice that he is buying or he has bought a huge Hilsa fish. Remember, everyone is interested in Hilsa fish, but now when he changed his appearance in that way, nobody noticed it. So in that way, he, in a very clever way, he changed his uh, look and he tricked everyone into thinking that he is a madman or a crazy person, but he was able to succeed in his, in his task or in his challenge. And because he has proven that, the king was also very happy. And so that's how our, our story ended. Now, we are going to take a look at some of our exercises here. If you can turn... If you can turn to page 43, we have some exercises here. In fact, page 42, look, uh, working with language. So I'm gonna read out the first question here. Notice how in a comic book, there are no speech marks. You, I want you to underline that speech marks. And when we say speech marks, we mean these kind of inverted 
commas, all right, or double in, this is a double inverted comma. We use this when we are uh, giving a direct speech, when without changing anything, we are using the exact word of a person, we use this double inverted comma. And I hope you notice that uh, the, the dots are towards the, uh, at the bottom, we can see, and the second one is starting from the top. So that is how we write a double inverted comma. In some case, we also use single inverted comma. So when we use this, we are suggesting, instead of these callouts, we are saying that this is the direct speech of a person, all right? And so a direct speech is the same thing as, is one part of a reported speech, all right? And in a reported speech, we use uh, examples. For example here, told, words such as told, uh, said, told, said, ordered, asked, etc. So these are some reported speech that we use in order to repeat what the person had said. So in our exercise here, you will find that uh, an example is given there. I'll read out the question. Change the following sentences in the story to reports, reported speech. The first one has been done for you. Uh, we will read out the first one. How much did you pay for the Hilsa? The question is, uh, how much did you pay for that Hilsa? With a question mark. I want you to keep that noted. The woman, the answer, the woman asked, remember, we are using a reported speech here, asked, the man, how much he had paid for that Hilsa. So we are changing the question into using a reported speech as well as into the past tense. So when we are repeating, it is changed into the past tense. So words such as had and the verb pay is being changed into paid. So that's how we convert it or changed it into reported speech. Now let's take a look at the next question here. Why is your face half shaven? Gopal's wife has asked this question, remember? So when we are converting this, Gopal's wife asked, because we have a question mark there, so you would use the reported speech asked. Gopal's wife asked him why his face was half shaven. So we are using the past tense was there and full stop. So no need to give a question mark there because we have already changed it into a statement. So questions can be changed into a statement in that way in reported speech and uh, that's how we go about with uh, changing the sentences into reported speech, all right? I hope you would uh, take some time to work it out. Remember, when we are converting a reported speech, you have to uh, use past tense, you have to use reported speech. If it is a question, you can use asked. If it is a statement, uh, a simple sentence, then you can use reported speech such as told, said, because you are reporting, all right? And if it is an order, in one of your question, you have an order of the king. So you can or convert it into the king ordered, you can put it in that way. So that's how you can convert your reported speech, all right? And uh, that's how you can also work out your exercises. Uh, remember to read your comic one once more, all right? Read it very carefully. And now that you know the story, I'm sure you will be able to work out the rest of your exercises. And on that note, we would be winding up today's class. Thank you all very much for joining me.